Gender and Theology, then, this is a part of a two-part series. This one is on Rosemary Radford Ruth, and the other one is on Mary Daly. They, it's just too big of a topic to do them both together. Um, otherwise, you would have got a staple in the top corner of your coveralls, and I really didn't think you'd want that either. So, top first box, then, is for um, Rose Radford Ruther's quote. Now, you don't have to write the whole quote down, but I do think it's a really good place to start an essay, so you do have a box for the quote. Um, God is not a being removed from creation, ruling it from outside in a manner of a patriarchal ruler. God is the source of being that underlies creation and grounds its nature and future potential for continual transformative renewal in a biophilic mutality, uh, mutuality even. Um, quite a mouthful. Even if you just... Even if you just learn the top part of that, that God is not being removed from creation, what that means is God is part of creation, God is part of it, is it's not just a patriarchal ruler, God is not just the male ruler, God is the source of being that is underlying creation, underlying the grounds, and its nature and potential continual transformative renewal, so this idea of it keeping going as well, is all part of um, nature, is all part of um, creation. So what she's arguing there is God is not removed from creation. All right, box underneath then. This, this uh, sheet, by the way, is nicely spread out because obviously you, I could have made this into just one side, but obviously because we've had the two sides, I might as well use them and spread it out. So the maleness of Christ goes into that uh, second main box. Ruther argues that Christianity has become distorted by patriarchal tradition and is in need of a reform. Reform means a change. It needs a change. She believes the Catholic Church's teachings on women's ordination and view on abortion have been influenced and distorted by patriarchy. So what she's arguing there is that the Church's teachings have been distorted by patriarchy. Don't forget, patriarchy is a male-dominated society uh, who govern laws, etc. She also believed patriarchy has shaped Christian thought about God, which too needs to be challenged. Oops, apologies. So only those three points to go in that box, lots of space. So this is all linking in the maleness of Christ. This is all linking this links into the next um, slide as well. It's all to do with this idea of where has the maleness of Christ come from. So interesting with this, what she's arguing is, is that the church is teaching on women's ordination. So women being able to move up in the ranks of priesthood, but also views on abortion have been influenced by this patriarchy. Um, interesting with uh, abortion used to be one of the topics on the old spec um, and it there was always an image that went round where views on abortion were always made by governments that were predominantly men men were the ones making the decisions about the abortion rights and rules and so often people campaigned to say actually it shouldn't be men that are making these decisions all right box underneath um you have space along the top that's for those bits so you can just split it. I didn't put a line down the middle of the, the top bit as well. So you can just separate it like that. But Jesus' challenge to male warrior messiah expectation. Quite a mouthful again. Male warrior messiah is what she's focusing on. The expectation that the male warrior messiah was going to come. So you have the Davidic messiah versus Ruth's idea of Jesus the servant king. And then obviously the two boxes underneath are going to be for the Davidic and for Jesus the servant king. So all of that just represents the slide. So you've got plenty of space. So what was the Davidic messiah? The Hebrew scriptures or the Old Testament views the messiah as God's chosen anointed one. 
He is the future king in a new kingdom, the son of David, the restorer of Israel as an autonomous power, autonomous free power, deliverer from bondage through battle, conquering warrior, liberator of people from their enemies. And so because of his special relationship with God, God favours, uh, favour will shine upon these people. So God, God's grace, God's favour will shine upon those. And so the Davidic Messiah was the prophesied Messiah that was going to come to liberate Israel, be the conquering warrior um, that was going to um, help them get out of this bondage and be the king. Very, very strong idea. 